I feel so nervous. My name is Tanae Sanderson, and I am. I was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, but was raised in Poplar River First Nation. Me and my sister were separated many times, and I was sexually assaulted in Steinbach, Manitoba, by one of my foster cousins. When we were nine, my Uncle David took us and reuniting us with her sister Lori, who he had kept since she was three months. And we started singing in church and praying, and how to play instruments. I was going to school, I was getting really good grades. And then one day I decided that I was gonna go visit my mom. And we were supposed to stay at the Days Inn, but we decided we were gonna go to Nova Scotia, Truro. So we traveled in the semi-truck with her husband and the whole way there, she drank her beer and she was doing drugs in the back of the semi. And then in Quebec, we cut her off because there was no more oat sale. And then she started to drink windshield washing fluid on Christmas morning. And um, I looked at her and asked her what was wrong with her. And she told me to keep my mouth shut. So that's what I did. We were in Nova Scotia. Churro driving around, they took me to the duck pond and showed me all these little duckies swimming around. We looked everywhere for somewhere to eat because it was Christmas Day and there was absolutely nothing open. And we got a motel room and me and it was meant for me and her and her husband slept inside the semi truck. <clears throat> and when we were in the hotel, she started to act weird, saying she was gonna die, rocking back and forth on the bed. And I kept asking her, let's go to the hospital, and she didn't want to. So I just left her and I tried to sleep when she would come lay on me and tell me she was really, really hot. So I made her a cold bath and she laid in there for a while. And then she came out and she said she wanted to go to the hospital, so I started to get her dressed. And then she collapsed and I couldn't pick her up. So I ran outside and I got my dad, well, my mom's husband, to come out. And by the time we got back, she was already gone. After that, we made our statements to the police. And then again, they were trying to contact CFS to come get me. Um, when we went to my dad's uh, sister, Shirley's, there was a big Christmas tree and lots of food. But when we sat down, there was just something missing. I felt alone. I was scared. Um, there was just something missing. I didn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I just waited for my sisters to get there, and then I caught up on all my sleep. Um, we came back to Winnipeg after the funeral and we had a memorial service out here. Um, going back to the day with my mom, I remember her rubbing my head as I had my head on her lap and she would tell me stories about my great grandfather and how he raised her told her from right from wrong. She would really wish that things would be different and that we could all be a family again. And in my heart, I always had hope. I always thought, oh, in one day, or even when I turn 18, it's just gonna be me and her, me and her. And I did get on my hands and knees and I prayed to God. There was no help there, and I lost my belief after that. I stopped singing, I stopped going to church, I stopped praying. I guess I got into the wrong crowd, and I started doing drugs and alcohol myself, and 
dealing with my grief. I hid it from everybody, not letting them know what was wrong. But once I would get drunk, I would flip over and I would cry. I would run away. I would try to give up on myself. And then I had a beautiful girl named Megan come and rescue me. She's the best. But I partied too much. I didn't go to school. I didn't want to work. So they told me that they had to put me back into a foster home since I wasn't ready to grow up. But yeah, and when I turned 18, I realized that there is no more free living. There is no more time to waste. And that I'm dealing with my grief in the wrong way by drinking and doing drugs and just hiding everything from everybody. And now I'm trying to take a step by sharing my story and letting all you young people know that you aren't alone and this world is pretty crappy. Can I say that? And yeah, we can all do it. We just got to believe in ourselves and stay strong and just keep going for your goals and your dreams.